What is the stupidest thing you've done just to show you could do it? A buddy bet I couldn't finish the spiciest chicken sandwich at this joint, known for insanely spicy chicken, in under 30 minutes. I knew I fucked up when they gave me gloves to eat the sandwich so the sauce couldn't touch my skin, and made me sign a waiver of liability. Won the bet, but really I lost in the end. Edit, for anyone who wanted to know, this was at Howlin' Ray's in LA. I've won, but at what cost? My wife was a heavy smoker, and at the time, I'd never touched a cigarette. I would always lovingly urge her to quit. She told me I had no idea how hard it was. I decided to start smoking for about a month, and then to quit just to show her I could do it. That was 10 years ago. Now I smoke a pack a day. She no longer smokes. This might be the worst one. Edit, I really hope you can overcome smoking though. Shouldn't be a problem now that his wife can show him how easy it is. I saw an old man do a front flip off a 12 meters cliff. I said if he can do it, so can I. I did the front flip off alright, but then I fell with my belly, that Zeus could hear. Knocked the air out of me, but luckily people were floating nearby to save my dumbass. I bruised my ass by jumping off a similar height rock and landing in a seated position. How was that enema? Public enema sucks. I fell water skiing one time and my father, being the kind man he is, pointed to my giant turd floating next to me and did not help me back in the boat while he laughed about it. I've literally never told anyone this except the doctor at the hospital but that happened to me too. I got thrown off a jet ski at 70 miles per hour and hit the water bias first and then smacked my head. Shit my pants, sprained my neck, had a concussion, and sprained a shoulder. 0 of 10, do not recommend. In 2001, my sister got me a Sony phone. She worked in a phone shop and got discount. On the box, it said the phone was waterproof and there were tiny rubber seals in places. I believed it. At the pub where I worked, this aspect came up in conversation. Some guy said the phone couldn't be really waterproof. Remembering the text on the box, I argued the point. And dropped my phone into a pint of beer in an effort to prove it. I was wrong. Brutal but well-earned life lesson. My friend did something similar at a bar years ago. She had a case called Life Proof and she swore it made her phone indestructible. So she picked it up, slammed it on the table, and shouted Life Proof. When she lifted it up her entire screen was shattered. Walked through the brush of our tree line to get a football to prove it wasn't poison ivy. I did it. I got the ball. It was poison ivy. I once did something similar, but it turns out I'm immune to poison ivy. The rest of my friends. They had not that immune. Fun fact, poison ivy in humans is like chocolate for dogs, it only affects 40-60% to 60 of dogs. It affects enough of them to just avoid all dogs from all chocolates just to be safe. With poison ivy in humans, only a certain percent get the effects. However, just because you don't get the effects the first time, such as itchiness and rashes, you can easily get them the second or third, etc. You can handle poison ivy 20 times thinking you're immune, then all of a sudden the 21st time hits you like a brick. Like chocolate for dogs, even if you think you're okay, it's still best to just avoid. In grade school, maybe age 11 or 12, I had these cheap jeans. I figured out that I could flex my belly and pop the button open, found this funny and guy friends in class got a laugh too. One of them turns to a girl, hey, check out what he can do, I flex my belly and let out a huge fart while the button popped open. She turned away, my buddy laughed, and I never did this trick again. Yeah. Something similar happened to me after a final exam in 8th grade. 
Me, my buddy and a girl across from us were done our tests though we were doing dumb shit to pass the time. One example was holding our breath and making our faces turn red. In a dead silent classroom I let out a high pitched fart and I swear to god my soul left my body. It wasn't low and fast so you could pass it off as a chair, no sir? Everyone knew I just ripped ass. I used to work at a shitty movie theater. As it gets to midnight all the employees hang out behind the concessions counter and talk, eat the popcorn before we have to throw it out, etc. One of them dared someone to do a butter drink. The liquid butter for popcorn is way closer to straight oil. So an oil drink. I love the attention, so I said pass it to me and I drinked it all without letting myself think about the consequences. It tasted like liquid plastic and I hated it but everyone was howling and incredulous and I felt cool for a whole minute. Shat my brains out the next morning. Worth it? My dad put so much of that butter on his popcorn that it leaked through the bottom of the bag one time and ruined my favorite shorts. The worst part was that we saw deep, blue sea, and I was little. Everyone thought I peed my pants from being scared. Sounds like something that a kid who peed their pants would say. Won a donut eating contest. In 10 minutes I ate about 17 donuts, and seconds before the time was up and I had all my thoughts set on kicking dudes ass who wasn't even taking part yelled that throwing up afterwards should disqualify you. Somebody counted that I ate a few days worth of calories. My appetite came back two days after. Jumped illegally over the China-Myanmar border, and back again. This was in 2002. I was in China legally, in the town of Ruili, Yunnan province. Across a small stream and two thin strings of barbed wire was the city of Muse, White Elephant City, Myanmar, which was closed to foreigners at the time. A group of opium addicts were smoking in the thick bushes growing near the border, and invited me over for a chat. I saw no border guards were within line of sight of me, so I went to them. We had an interesting chat in a mixture of English and Chinese. Later I wandered into the closest narrow street lined with dilapidated white wooden buildings, with bearded men in sarongs wandering around. I bought a Burmese noodle dish. No alcohol available in that place. Then I backed to the same crossing spot and went over it, about 90 minutes after I first went over. Rui, China is, or at least was, a lawless borderland, with all the vices that lawless border towns typically attract. My crossing was the least of the local authorities' worries. I wouldn't repeat it, or recommend it to anyone, though. Very lucky you're not rotting away in a nasty ass prison cell. I told my 6th grade friends I could jump off a two-story roof and not get hurt. Guess who only got a scraped knee that day? Not me. I broke my leg. When I was 6 I stapled my fingers because I had convinced all of my friends that I had iron hands. I was around 15 years old and I was fiddling around with a stapler and stapled my pointer fingers together. It was the skin just next to the nails, so it barely hurt. I went downstairs to tell my mom who was doing laundry that I stapled my fingers together. I still remember the look on her face to this day. Edit, that was yesterday, so of course I remember. Since grade 6, I've stapled my thumb at least once a year. I stapled my thumb the first time because I wanted to demonstrate to my friends how my classmate stapled his thumb and since then I've stapled my thumb while showing various people how I stapled my thumb the first time. Parents put a curfew on the computer during summer break when I was 12. No gaming at 10 pm to 6 am. A reasonable person would go to bed at 10 and wake up at 7 to play, right? 12 year old me just stayed up until 6 am, woke up my parents, and played until noon. Then slept until dinner. Repeated for a few days until my parents got sick of waking up at 6 am. Then I went back to gaming until like 2 am. I, at age like 9 to 10, 
wanted a cookie that my friend had. I said it to my friend, and he proceeded to completely lick the entire cookie. Still want it. He said holding it out. Dumbass me proceeded to grab it and eat it in one bite. When I was around 12, I was neglecting to flush my piss. Too busy playing armored core. So my dear mother brings me into the bathroom, and tells me if I don't flush next time, she's going to dip my hands in the piss. I looked at her, stretched out my hand, put it down the toilet, scooped my unwashed urine, covered myself in it, only a little or mom, thank god. I wasn't even a malicious child, just salivated at the opportunity to show I could withstand the punishment and was thus unafraid. I could imagine a little 12 year old thinking he's badass, covering himself with piss, and his mom completely terrified of his immense power. I was about 4 years old and my grandfather was making something with buttermilk. I saw it in his hand, and I cried and screamed and begged give me some. He kept saying no, you won't like it, but I persisted. He finally poured me an entire glass. I took one swig and I'm sure he could see the disgust on my face, because he looked like he had won. I stared at him right in his eyeballs as I chugged the entire glass. Ha, my kids did this with Baker's chocolate. They, at the time nine and six years old, begged for a piece. I gave them a bit and I could see the disgust in their faces, but they had to be like it's tasty. I proved to myself that it's possible to eat five kilos of shrimp in one sitting. I also proved that eating five kilos of shrimp in one sitting will make you very, very sick. Agreed. Red Lobster did all you can eat for shrimp once and I considered it a challenge. I sat down and immediately asked my waitress what the most shrimp she had seen a person eat was. I did a similar thing at Olive Garden with the endless pasta, turns out it's not endless and they just keep giving you smaller and smaller portions, I had to ask for two plates because the waitress wouldn't come around quick enough. But she got a nice tip so I didn't feel as bad. I was a sophomore in high school doing cross country, swimming, and track, I needed the carbs. Shove my pointer finger into my nose up to second knuckle. I then got a sinus infection. Who knew? My daughter did that to me when she was two. Then she hooked her finger and pulled. Had a terrible nosebleed and for a few days if I sneezed it would start back up. Zero of ten, would not recommend. I stabbed my leg with a pencil in elementary school. I told people I couldn't really feel much pain, which, at the time, was true. There was a spot on my leg from the pencil for years. As a kid I told my friends I could hold my breath for a long time, long enough to pass out, in fact. And that's exactly what I proceeded to do. My friends and used to have those breathing contests in the pool where you'd go underwater and see who could hold in their breath the longest. I'm a really competitive person so of course I won. I passed out in the pool when I was nine doing this. The lifeguard was too busy flirting to care and he thought I was faking it. Holy shit, did you survive? Not me but one of my former co-workers told us about the time he ate a tub of butter on a dare. He made it about halfway through and had to throw up. He said what came out was neon yellow. For the next month, the smell of butter made him gag and when he perspired, he could still smell it. You'd think he'd learn, but he attempted the tub of butter challenge a second time. This time, he paced himself and actually finished the whole thing. He said though was eating it before having to catch a train. While he was waiting, his heart was racing and he felt so amped up, he did push-ups and jumping jacks at train station. What's the stupidest thing you've done to prove you could do that? Leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more same videos.